Welcome back, thank you for joining me, and I'm glad to be back after battling a sickness for three or four days, and we can resume our little studies together. Uh, today we will be in Matthew chapter 5, we'll look at verse, uh, let's see, verse 8 in our little time together in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, first, let's pray. We praise you, O God, that you love us. We praise you, O God, for your faithfulness. We praise you, O God, for your holiness and the way in which uh, you have made a way for us to be set free and re restored to a relationship with you through the sacrifice and suffering of your son in our place. God, I pray that you would so transform us through Christ by the Holy Spirit that our lives would be lived in conformity to you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus is in the Sermon on the Mount, and he's basically describing, uh, again, the law of God. But more importantly, <clears throat> I think he's really describing uh, what a relationship with God will look like. Our relationship with God, or we can't have a relationship with God unless we know Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that sets us right and sets us free. And Jesus continues on after he's talking about uh, being blessed. The, the poor are blessed. The, those who mourn are blessed. The meek are blessed. Those that hunger and thirst for righteousness are blessed. The merciful are blessed. And now in verse 8, he says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The pure in heart. Now, the original word there in the Greek, it, it really has to do with a, a single-mindedness, a singular devotion. Pure in heart means that there is a rightness of a heart that is restored to its original condition so that we are right with God. <clears throat> and as we are right with God, we will see God and show forth God. This is a single-mindedness that is rooted in a savior-mindedness. The pure in heart is the one whose viewpoint and whose loyalty has been captured and changed and is now committed to God, which then alters our mindset toward others. Now, remember, Jesus is not just describing how we live, but it's who we are, and as a result, the way of life that flows from that. And blessed are the pure in heart. We are not a single-minded people. We have divided loyalties. We have conflicted commitments. We are pulled in a myriad of directions. And, and God in Christ is trying to pull all this chaos in our life into a singular commitment that is to the Lord Jesus Christ, and from and through him, all other commitments pale in comparison and come into their proper place. Maybe you feel conflicted. Maybe you sense that you're spread thin. See, these are all phrases that we use in our day and in our time. Overcommitted, uh, too busy. It's because we have too many conflicted loyalties. We are double, triple, quadruple-minded. We need to be singularly minded. And the only way that we can be singularly minded is when the Savior captures our heart and we can develop a Savior mindedness. We are given a Savior mindedness where we see and we seek and we savor and we think and we act and we talk through and in our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what it means when we say Jesus is Lord. He is the predominant ruling, commitment, power, authority in our lives. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those who have been touched and rescued and redeemed out of the chaos, brought into a peace relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You'll see God. And as we see God, we will show forth the glory of God. May we be those that are captured in such a way that we have a savior-mindedness, a single-mindedness. Our loyalty to Christ 
drives and usurps all other loyalties. We live for him and we live from him. This is the work of the gospel. I'll see you again next time.